In today's video, student-led virtual events. And today's video is also featuring a special guest, Fiona Moss, Secondary Vice Principal at the American International School of Bucharest. Hi, on this week's 5 Minute Friday, we have special guest and Secondary Vice Principal from the American International School of Bucharest, Fiona Moss. A few weeks ago, like me, you may have seen Fiona and members of her community tweeting about a virtual event. They had an event scheduled for their, their calendar, but like many schools around the world, they have had to transition to remote learning. Fiona's going to talk a little bit about how they took their community building that usually happened on a physical campus and how they transferred it into a virtual campus. She has lessons to share, uh, but before she digs into that, what I would like to do is just reflect briefly on her sharing and some of the other sharing that I've been seeing online as sort of three keys for us to think more about um, as we continue to foster community in online spaces. If you have a key, please let us know about it in the comments. Key number one, remember that you already have a lot of creativity in your community. And creativity is really useful because it's going to let you solve problems. So before you do anything, really think about the strength in your existing foundation. Share some of those stories and remind your peers and your team and your students of times in the past when you've been able to solve problems, when you've been able to adapt and adjust. Remembering and recalling that strong foundation is going to be really powerful as you continue to step forward. Key number two, thoughtful communication. In person, many of us are able to rely on some of those soft signals that remind one another, even when there's tension, uh, that it's still collegial. When you are communicating online, it's almost double or triple the importance that you are really polite, that you are really mindful of the stress that might be on the outsides of the screen for people. So whenever you're doing any planning, um, really sort of try to take that into account. Kindness is going to get you a long way. Key number three, it doesn't have to be perfect. Um, I, I think often as educators, we put so much pressure onto ourselves. And I think especially in a time like this, we need to remember that if we are trying something, there are going to be mistakes and that has to be okay. So the bar is not set at perfect. The bar is set at developing community. And actually, if we're setting the bar at perfection, I think often that's gonna turn people off. So remind people of mistakes that you have made so that they feel like they can own up to mistakes that they are worried about making themselves. Without further ado, here's Vice Principal Fiona Moss to share some of the amazing work that her school has been doing. Enjoy. Hello, my name is Fiona Moss, and I am the Secondary Vice Principal at the American International School of Bucharest. Today I'd like to share with you a little bit about the events that we are running on our campus virtually, um, as we are, like many of you, um, in distance learning. So before I do that, I just wanted to give a shout out to my professional learning network, um, the AISB Community of Educators and Leaders, which has been super supportive and the Twitter and educational community at large has been wonderful. And the amount of sharing and collaboration um, has been um, uh, really eye-opening for me. And I think like all of you, my learning curve has gone through the roof. So thank you. Um, before I get into the events, I thought it would be important to share a bit of context. So we're in our third week of distance learning. And before we went into distance learning, we kind of went with these three um, important parts to our program. First off, that well-being and relationships was the most important thing that we are um, doing. The second was that we're about simplicity, so less is more. And where possible, we wanted to use our present uh, structures and systems. The third was opportunity, to look at this as an opportunity and that we were all learners together in this and thinking of using design, um, thinking as a tenant and using feedback and reflection and adjustment 
And we've really been trying to live that. Uh, two things that we were thinking about before we went into this that we have managed to put into our program are the ideas of flex time and mentoring. Uh, shout out to Sea Change Mentoring and Ellen Mahoney, who's helped us to start to think through that. So the other really interesting part for us was that we came on a little bit later than everybody else. And uh, we were fortunate to be able to learn um, the importance of keeping space for community connection. So when we made our program, we built this into how we structured our days. So a little bit into what we we're actually doing. Uh, I thought the best way to do this was to show you a system that we had in play, which is um, how, we, how we start each of our days. So this is our schedule. So Vampire Diaries is our morning announcement system. Um, so our schedule has at nine o'clock every day, we start with advisory and we start with a personal uh, check-in every single day. Each advisor has about eight students. So this is a little bit different than our normal advisory program, but it's working really well, those daily check-ins with all of our kids. Um, they're synchronous and they're done through Zoom. Uh, then we go through our daily schedule and really this is what's ha helped us is we've created this flex time for our MYP students where we've dropped their final block. And that's um, the place and the space where a lot of our community events are now taking place. Um, so here's our announcements. I, I left some of them from Friday. I haven't edited them for the week, but this week coming up is Mental Health Awareness Week and our counselors are running an amazing program that has five different days with five different focuses. Um, I had a little video message. The Bite, which I'll talk about later, is also doing some articles. Um, but this is a real um, celebration of what we were able to do. And our students um, were planning for several months, like three or four months before this came about, our first ever Human Rights Week. And um, this was a combination of um, a variety of different groups, our service groups, our student councils, we have eight student councils. And um, uh, they, they came together and they really created this wonderful week of engagements. It was all student led. They came up with the different engagements. We had webinars and uh, discussion groups through Zoom. And they created video, video podcasts. And um, it, it was articles in the bite. Uh, it went on for the entire week, and there was different uh, focuses for each of the different days. And again, completely student-led with their teacher mentors um, watching over what they were doing. So that was a fantastic week for us. Um, you can also see we've got uh, some arts challenges, a TikTok thing, um, some photography. Our co-curricular council has also stepped in, our co-curricular team, offering different um, kind of workouts and physical activities during those uh, flex times as well. Um, there's also been offerings for reading groups and book studies. And as you can see, our students are now proposing that there are actually more student-led workshops that happen in this time. So that flex block has a ton of different things that are starting to step into it. The first week, Pretty much nothing happened in it. But after that, so many things have happened. This is our uh, great student newspaper that's uh, facilitated by the uh, wonderful Jen Stevens, who has done a great job in helping our community come together. And our student newspaper is probably one of the heart, heart pieces of our community. It really, they do a great job of researching and providing unbiased reports and um, celebrating the cool things that go on. You can see they changed their logo for uh, Human Rights Week. And I'm sure they're going to do the same for this week coming up. And the week after is Earth Week. So, uh, yeah, we have lots of different things that are going on. So as you're planning, um, please don't forget about your uh, teacher team. We have a couple of things that we've started, new traditions, and uh, including a quiz night that we had. So my uh, advice, so if I was going to pick three pieces of advice to give you, um, first of all, use existing structures and systems. Really important to not reinvent the wheel if you have things that your students are familiar with and 
um, that are um, going to help you in this. Second, uh, empower your students. They are so skilled and they are the ones that know how to connect to your community. So they either can lead it or be a part of the planning for any event. Um, the third thing is that this is real world learning. So it's okay to make mistakes. And that was the real hurdle for our human rights group is that it was okay. Whatever they did was okay. Um, it was just going to help our community be stronger. So really it comes down to just give it a try. And, um, it, it, you'll be amazed at the things that the students can do. So that's it from me. That's my, uh, words of wisdom about running community events. You can follow me on Twitter and I'm happy to answer any questions that you may have. And I hope that everybody has a wonderful weekend and stays well and safe. And a huge shout out to Adiro who continues to help all of us rethink how we do um, teaching and learning. So thank you so much. Have a great weekend. Thanks for watching 5 Minute Friday today. We hope you enjoyed this video and you can take back what you learned to your remote learning setting wherever you are in the world. And if you'd like to continue learning about creating community in virtual spaces, I have an exciting offer for you in just a second. At Eduro, we have been humbled to have had educators from around the world join us in panel conversations and respond to our emergency school closures resources. We want to continue to support you. We know how challenging it is to be an educator right now. We know that school leaders and coaches are looking for ways to keep their community inspired and to relentlessly build community. That's why we've made our online course, Your Connected Classroom, free for you and your peers right now. You can find the link in the description box below. We have been creating community virtually for over a decade now through our Coattail program and through the Coach Micro Credential. It's something we know inside and out, and we want to support you through this difficult time. Follow us at Adoro Learning or subscribe to the Coach Better podcast to continue this conversation.